started in this venture together. And I heard fiberglass tearing to pieces. We're going to have to abandon ship. There was nothing to protect us. I knew I was going to die. I'm not in a safe environment anymore. I didn't consider animals. I didn't consider reptiles. He just kept saying, am I going to die? I'm never going to be able to see my family. My son was going to lose his life. I'm going to die here in the middle of nowhere. I have never sailed before, and I've been yearning to be on the ocean. All my life, I've gone on adventures to overcome fear. So when this opportunity came, I signed up and I scheduled to go. It's called the Baja Ha Ha. It's a fun rally from San Diego to Cabo, San Lucas in Mexico. It's a bunch of people that it's their first real offshore cruising experience. And so they originally started so that they could get together and just have some support. This was my fifth rally. I am the captain of the ship. It was fun. It was like a party. It was like we're all doing this. We're all starting in this venture together. There was five people total on the boat. One of them is a co-worker of mine. He was there mostly to learn how to teach offshore cruising. Rujini and I both worked for sailing school, and my role with her was really to support her. I was primarily doing this race for fun. When we first started the trip, it was so gorgeous and sunny, and there's all these fabulous sailboats, and everyone's talking over the radios, and the waves are calm, and the water looks beautiful. It's the morning of the second day. Feels that there's some repair work that needs to be done on the boat that can't be done by her. We had a problem with the alternator, so the batteries weren't charging, so we couldn't use a lot of the equipment. So I decided basically to go into Ensenada and try to have someone fix it. After we left Ensenada, everybody was very happy to go back out to sea. That's what we were doing. We were going to join back the, the race, and we were going to be right back into it. It was just a, a weird circumstance that we had to stop in Ensenada, so we distanced ourselves from the fleet. When we were surrounded by other boats, if something goes wrong, then they're right there, and, and we can get immediate, immediate help. And now we were alone. So I was a little worried. We were 40 miles off the coast of Mexico. It looks like we're in the middle of nowhere. And someone yells, there's whales. I'm so excited. And I rush over to the, the side of the boat. For the students, it's exciting to see whales. Uh, so they were all excited, but their movement was just so erratic. There were so many bubbles. They were either bubble feeding or mating. And if they're mating, then I know not to come close. I looked out of the corner of my eye and saw a whale approaching us. And it was right on a collision course with us. And I took an evasive action. And so he turned the boat to one side. There was a few moments where we saw nothing and we didn't know where they were and where we were in, in relation to the whales. All of a sudden, I saw the pronounced hump of the humpback whale uh, just about 15 feet from the boat. Oh my God.
was a whale um, making full impact with the rudder of our boat. It was so loud, it turned the boat 180 degrees. And I heard fiberglass just tear into pieces. That sound was terrifying, and I knew immediately it was bad. Water was gushing in. 40 miles from the coast, my whole world just came crashing down. planned this trip to Guatemala the summer after I graduated from college and the summer before I started medical school. I really wanted to do something that I'll look back on in my life and say that was awesome. Alex is a wonderful son. Alex and I are very close. We've always been very close. I'm very much proud of him. I was excited for Alex to go to Guatemala, but I was always just thinking, you know, he was just going to be so far away. It was an emotional moment, but in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'll be back in a month. It'll be fine. This is no big deal. We hugged, and, uh, you know, I look back, and she's crying, but I knew that this was something that I had to do for myself, but more so, I really wanted to do for myself. I left Alabama, flew into Cancun, got on a bus, and then on the third day, I was in Guatemala. I am a southern boy. This is where I grew up, coming from Alabama. I was like a little kid, taking pictures, just like watching everything. It was one of the more beautiful sights I've ever seen in my life. The leaf cutter in. building that we're working on. Straight ahead is a 30-foot drop. There's like a big pond there. I walked down close to the water, but they said, don't get too close because there's crocodiles. And at that point, I realized I'm not necessarily in a safe environment anymore. I'm even more out of my comfort zone because these are things I didn't even consider. I didn't consider animals. I didn't consider reptiles and those kind of dangers. I was worried more about running out of drinking water or not having food, but I didn't even think about this stuff. When I got down to the game site there, I was really excited just to finally be there. This idea that I had months and months ago has finally come to fruition. I saw Nina, which I had met her previously. They met Alex for the first time at Vanderbilt, and I wasn't really sure that he was going to come to the jungle. I got back to camp one day, and there he was. So we welcomed him to have this wonderful experience. Nina was in charge, and she um, was giving me the rundown. She told me to always wear shoes, particularly because of a snake that's very common to this jungle, and uh, she called it a fair to lance, and it's actually down there called Barba Amaria, and it's the yellow beard. My biggest fear of working in the jungle has always been being bitten by the ferret lance. I've always heard about it. This is the thing that everybody's afraid of in, in this area of Guatemala, so there are a lot of stories. That's definitely the number one thing that everybody's looking out for all the time. The thing that makes the ferret lance extremely dangerous is that it's one of the only snakes in the world that will 
attack totally unprovoked. You get bitten and you fall over. Dead. I was sleeping on the ground in this tent, and it was hot, sweaty. The darkest dark you've ever seen. In the middle of the night, I woke up. I got my sandals on. Uh, at that point, I had to use the bathroom too bad, so I went outside. And I was watching for snakes like I was supposed to. Walking down the path, kind of, uh, you know, going back and forth with my light. And then, all of a sudden, I saw a flash, and something hit my foot, and I just jumped around. It was a scream that I've never screamed before. The snake just bit me. Like, they can't, this can't be happening. I hope that's not that snake they've been telling about. Oh, my God. 